Well, good morning and welcome to Kirk of the Valley Presbyterian Church. Thank you for joining us to worship online together. We're thrilled that you've done so. Please feel free to go back to the Kirk website, kirkval.org, and download a copy of the bulletin to follow along with our order of service. And as we begin our time together today, will you pray with me? Lord God, thank you for the privilege you give us of coming together to worship you today in spirit and in truth. Thank you for your presence among us today, and thank you for the way you love us beyond what we can imagine, O oh God. We pray that our worship today will be glorifying to you, and that we will draw near to you as you draw near to us. Thank you, O oh Lord. We honor you, we praise you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now over to Mark for our first praise song. Well, good morning, Kirk of the Valley. Morning. And my wonderful daughter is going to join us again today. Aren't we all privileged? Oh, my gosh. Let's all stand and sing because we will sing of the love of God he has for each and every one of us. Amen to that. One, two, three, four.
Thank you, Mark, for leading us in our first praise song. We're now going to go through some announcements. Please feel free to follow along in your bulletin. The first of which is we continue to have a virtual children's Sunday school ministry. Please feel free to look at your uh, bulletin to find out the details of when that happens. And if you have any questions, you can email us at childrensministries at kirkvow.org. Um, we continue to also um, collect offerings, even though we're not physically meeting in the same space. You can send a check or you can go online um, to do so. Um, and thank you for your continued generosity in the midst of uh, this season when we're not gathered in the sanctuary. Um, today also um, marks um, the final day of our pledge season. Thank you for those of you that have given pledges so far. And please feel free um, to send this back uh, to um, the Kirk and any amount is greatly appreciated. So thank you there. We continue our ministry of Count Your Blessings where we are kind of keeping up to date on what each other, each one is doing. Please feel free to take a picture to send it in with a caption to fellowship at kirkval.org. And if you want to see how others within the Kirk community are doing, please feel free to go to the fellowship tab on the Kirk website and drop down the Count Your Blessings. And as always, if you have any prayer requests or anything you'd like to share or any questions, also feel free to email us at fellowship at kirkval.org. We're now going to do a virtual passing of the peace. Please take a moment and reflect on someone within our community who God's laying on your heart, and then we would invite you this week to reach out to them and check and see how they're doing. We're now going to have the call to worship um, together. You can follow along. Um, with that in your bulletin, so please join me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are powerful and loving. We're grateful that you strengthen us through your spirit and our inner being. We ask that your power and love fill us, O oh Lord. We thank you that Christ dwells richly within our hearts through faith. We pray that you would strengthen our roots and establish our lives firmly in your love. May our lives be filled with your goodness and power as we walk in your spirit of love. Amen. And now back to Mark for our next song. Okay, this is actually take number four. Okay. <clears throat> All right, everybody, please stand up and raise your hands and join us in singing the doxology, doxology. praising our Lord and Savior. You ready? Praise, Praise God, God from whom all... all Blessings flow, praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Thank you, Mark, for leading us in that song. We're now going to read the scripture for today. It's found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Please feel free to follow along in your bulletin or to read from your own Bible. Here's what God's Word says. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today, we're going to conclude our sermon series on love. And in the first three weeks of our sermon series, we've learned quite a bit about this important concept that we could do anything for God, for the kingdom of God, without love our actions are meaningless. We've considered the greatest commandment to love God and love one another, and how that love is to be done actively as a reflection of our heart orientation. And then last week, we took a look at the parable of many of us know as the prodigal son. That's really a story of God's love for two, not one, but two lost sons. We considered how God's God is actually the prodigal one, the prodigal God who loves us so extravagantly and lavishes us with his love. And we also considered how Jesus, rather than the older brother in this story, Jesus himself is the perfect elder brother who goes out and seeks the lost, including you and me. This week, as we conclude our sermon series, we're going to talk about the transformative nature of God's love for us. And this is one of my favorite texts in all of Scripture. There's something about the way the Apostle Paul prays that his desires that the Ephesian church and us, by extension, would grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep the love of Christ is that really resonates with me deeply in my soul. And so as we explore this text together with me, I hope you'll be transformed along the way today too. Now, did you ever jump off the high dive at a swimming pool when you were a little kid or even as an adult? I remember the first time I did so when I was a little boy, it was probably five or six years old, I was taking a swimming lesson and I was scared. But eventually I got to the point where I finally took that jump and the thrill of taking the jump and then landing into water, and I felt the sensation of sinking deeper and deeper in to the deep end of the pool. Eventually, I got to the point where as I would jump off a high dive, I tried to reach the bottom of the pool, but I never quite got there. And my friends and I, we would spend countless summer days at the pool, going off the high dive, jumping off, trying to do different tricks and things like that as we jumped off, but never quite touched the bottom of the pool. And that's sort of like God's love for us, the depth of God's love. We can jump off the high dive, but God's love is like that pool of water. It envelops us, and it's so deep that we never quite touch the bottom of his love. Yet we keep trying and diving into God's love. Now, as we turn 
to this scripture this morning, we might realize that this entire section of scripture in Paul's letter to the Ephesians is a prayer that Paul is praying for the Ephesian church and by extension us. Notice how in verse 14 he begins by kneeling before the Father. A sign of humility, but also embracing that boldness to kneel before the throne of grace, as the writer of Hebrews talks to, tells us, knowing that Jesus himself is the perfect high priest and the perfect sacrificial lamb who is interceding for us. And this prayer that Paul prays, it's so beautiful and so powerful, and it's absolutely foundational to our relationship with God and our walk with Christ. Because you see, my friends, Paul wants something to happen in our lives. Paul is praying he wants us to be strengthened with power through God's Holy Spirit. Why? So Christ might dwell in our hearts because of our faith in him. Well, what for? So we'd be rooted and grounded in his love. So what? So we would be able to comprehend somehow the incomprehensible, the magnitude of God's love for us, the width and length and height and depth, the everything. Well, then what? then we would be filled with the fullness of God. Powerful prayer, and it builds. But the center of it is the place where we might face some of our biggest challenges. We don't really comprehend how much God loves us and how good God really is. We sometimes forget that God's with us every step of the way in the midst of the coronavirus and questions about what's a second wave going to look like or are we still in a first wave as cases build with the ongoing and very important need for racial reconciliation reaching our nation's consciousness and with such a political divide in our country from both sides of political aisle, Republicans and Democrats alike not working together even in the midst of all these things that we face, we have a God who loves us beyond what we can fully imagine. And Paul is praying for us to be empowered, to understand as best we can, to extend our imagination and to embrace that love, to jump off the high dive into the pool of God's love, knowing that it will transform our lives. And so we kind of get it. We kind of follow Jesus. We but if we fully understood God's goodness, if we fully understood God's love, it would change us radically. I have a coaching client I was talking with recently. He's a very deep and thoughtful thinker, very intellectually driven. We were talking about his learning process. And what he shared with me, he said, Len, when I take the time to wrap my mind around something and I can internalize it and I understand it, then I don't forget it, and I can apply it whenever and wherever I need to, almost on command. And so what we're talking about today, my friends, is God's desire for us to wrap not just our minds, but our hearts around what Paul is talking about, which is the transformative nature of God's love. It's a game changer. Paul's prayer is that we fully experience the power of God's love. And not because we're healed from something, and not because circumstances improve, and not because the coronavirus subsides, but because even and especially when hard time comes, losses and financial difficulties and illnesses and injustices, even when these tough stuff, this tough stuff occurs, that we would grasp and cling onto the Most High God, the God of the universe, the God of all creation, the creator of everything, who loves us and sent his son Jesus as our savior for us. And that same savior, Jesus was willing to step out of the glory of heaven into this finite space of earth and to dwell with us, to live with us, to eat with us, to pray with us, to teach us, and ultimately to go to the cross for us, to suffer and die for us out of love, love for each of us, for you, for me, for all of sinful humanity who was then and still continues to miss the mark, to turn our backs on God and one another. Paul wants us to be empowered to fully experience God's love so that as we're filled with, this, with the fullness of God, our lives will continually point back to the one who loves us. 
And Paul's language he uses as us being rooted and grounded or established in God's love. That's God telling us he wants us to know that the greatest foundation for our life is the love of God. We can't have a stronger foundation than that. And Paul prays that we would have the power to grasp the width and the length and the depth and the height of that love in Christ so that we would come to know that God, Christ's love is the greatest power of all and that he will fill us up and that we will overflow with that same love. We could even try to intentionally incorporate Paul's prayer into our own prayer lives, our lives, the lives of our loved ones, of our um, of one another, of those within the body of Christ, and of those beyond, will be more about God's love filling them and overflowing from them and from us. The prayer could be something like, Oh Lord, please fill me, please fill my family, and grant that they and I would have you as our firm foundation, and that we're grounded in you, that we would receive and accept your power, so that we could believe more, accept more, embrace more the power of your love. And as we do so, oh God, to somehow gain an understanding of how great your love is for us and to be filled with the fullness of your love. I want to invite you, my friends, this week to consider crafting your prayers similar to Paul's prayer and wait and see the impact that this has on your relationship with God and your relationship with others. And even invite others to do the same as well. Because you see, my friends, to know the love of God that surpasses knowledge literally means that we know the love of God that extends beyond anything we can imagine. It's kind of like throwing a ball, a baseball, further than we even thought we could. Now, my son Vincent, he likes to throw anything and everything he gets in hands on. Sometimes it's good stuff, a Nerf ball, a baseball, a football, um, a pillow. Occasionally throws his toys or other things and a little bit of a temper tantrum. But the point is that he's throwing things. And as he's growing and getting stronger, he's throwing further and further and further. Even than I expect him to sometimes. That's the image that Paul is going for here, to throw something beyond what's expected. And when we experience the fullness of God's love, can you imagine what that means? It means it's a complete that fills us to our capacity. So it's not just a drop when we're thirsty. It fills us to capacity and beyond. We never thirst again. That's what's available for us. Jesus himself said, he is the living water. And whoever drinks the water that Jesus gives, he'll never thirst. And that's what Paul is talking about here. That God wants to saturate our lives with his love, wants us to be filled with his love, wants us to experience his love so that we never thirst for anything or anyone again beyond God. So that when tough times come, we're filled with God's love and able to navigate those difficult waters of loss or change or uncertainty instead of turning to something else or someone else to fill us up that might inadvertently pull us away from God. Instead, we're already filled with God's love, knowing we're grasping, holding on to a God that will never let us go, who loves us beyond measure, who sent his son Jesus for us, and who invites us to go deeper in our relationship with him, even and especially in the midst of hard stuff that's going on right now. Can you see how transform transformative this could be if we're filled with the love of God? Can you imagine what our families or our virtual workplaces would be like as we shelter in place? Can you imagine what our neighborhoods or our communities would look like even as we socially distance and keep wearing masks as we're being asked to do? Can you imagine what our nation would look like if we were filled with the love of God as we face the challenge of systemic racism together? Our world would then begin to resemble that part of the Lord's prayer when Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's love is transformative. And what's interesting about this text is there's also a communal element to this. I'm going to take a quick look at verse 18 again. It says, 
that you may have power together with all the saints, all of God's holy people. God wants us to experience and embody his love in Christian community. In other words, it's not enough for us to just experience God's love for ourselves alone, although that's certainly where it starts, but also in and with our other sisters and brothers in Christ. We need one another. We're called to experience God's love with and through one another. I want to share a story. There was a little while back, a few centuries ago, there was a mountain village somewhere in Europe. And there was a nobleman who wondered, what was my legacy going to be? And what can I leave to the townspeople here? And at last he decided to build them a church. And no one saw the complete plans for the church until the day it was finished and unveiled. And as the people gathered, they marveled at the beauty and the completeness of this church. But then someone looked up and said, wait, where are the lamps? How will the church be lighted? And the woman stopped and he pointed to some of the empty brackets on the walls. Then he gave each and every family a lamp. And he said they were to bring with them that lamp when they came to worship together. And he said, each time you're here, the area where you're seated will be lighted. But each time you're not here, the area will be dark. You see, my friends, we need each other. God's given each one of us particular gifts, strengths, and experiences. We each have something to contribute, to share, to give to this part of the body of Christ and to the world beyond us. Whenever we don't use what we've been given, a part of our community is empty, is dark. We truly are better together. So our service to God and to one another doesn't flow out of obligation or duty or mechanistic obedience. It flows out of love. Love for our God who loves us, who created us, who saved us, who sustains us, who provides for us. And it's the kind of that we can share and embody in community with one another. You see, my friends, we have a God who loves us immensely who can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, as verse 20 tells us, who's worthy of praise and honor and glory, and who we can glorify by greatly receiving the love that's offered to us in and through our Savior Jesus. And as we receive that love, our lives can and will be transformed by Jesus so that we're filled with a capacity to love. So we can't help but turn around and share with God and with everyone we encounter that very same love that we've received. Will you pray with me? Lord God, thank you that you love us in such a way that you want us to understand the height and the depth and the length and the width of your love for us. Thank you that you want us to be empowered to understand and experience your love. Thank you that you want our lives to be saturated, to be filled with your love, dear Lord. May we love you, dear Lord. May we love one another in ways that glorify you and draw us and others closer to you. We pray all of this in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 says this. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Let us stand and sing, Love Divine, O Love's Excel.
Eric for leading us in our response to him. We're now going to pray together the word, the prayer our Savior taught us, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is this in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're now going to watch a video to see what the children did in Sunday school last week. The old rules, he didn't like the one new rule. And, and he believes like the king's rule. But then once he got blinded and then uh, got unblinded, uh, he followed Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he only liked the old rule, not the new rule. So some people don't like change. Mm. Why do you think he didn't like the new rule? I don't know. Is everybody trying to eat bread without water or something? Y'all all look like you're choking. What's going on here? This is Kirk tradition. I just have to tell you that, that the kids always would go after the leftover. All of the bread. I think that's wonderful. Can we, get, can we get some water? Because from what I'm seeing. <laughs> all this stuff over the last month or so that we've been learning, this is, this is the one where it all comes together. Paul was not involved in Sunday school. All of these people were like doing this other thing. And he's like, well, that's not in the book. That's, that's not in the book. I don't know anything about that. And then God was like, oh, no, 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 no. I've got plans for you. Here, go blind. And then That's for the disciples were like, yeah, oh, now we get to show you. Now we get to do care for you. Now we get to do God's work on you. And he's like, I get it. And then he got his sight back, right? Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs yeah. up if that makes sense. Give yeah, me a thumbs down if that does not make sense. Cool? Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Nicholas, you have a question. Uh, no, it's actually kind of a comment. It's okay. kind of like in Beauty and the Beast when the Beast gets cursed and he has to learn to love. He got blind until he learned to believe mm -hmm. in God. Good. Yes. Good. Excellent. <laughs> a lot of those concepts come from the Bible. God had more information. So Paul had to find out more information. Because you see this, this, this yeah, book, exactly. this one we call the Bible? We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. To God, the whole thing is the Testament. And love ended up changing things because he had an experience. So I, so I have a question for you guys. We talk about, we, we come together, we talk about this stuff every Sunday. There are people in the world who do not have the experience that we have, right? We have it. We're part of the discipleship, right? So for the people who do not have this experience, what can we do in the world? Anybody? Pray. We can, we can what? Pray. Yes. Pray, yes. pray that all the bad stuff will be over soon. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. That's an expression of love into the world. I always pray before I go to bed. We should all do that. All right, everybody, have a absolute wonderful week. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Sunday. Thank you, Mark, for leading us in our final closing song. And as we conclude our time together today, please, my friends, receive this benediction. May God strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. May you be rooted and established in love. May you have power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And may you be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And all God's people said, Amen.